Hello and welcome back to Wilderness Adventures UK. So in today's video, I'm going to take you back, take you back to one of my earlier videos. I don't know if you remember, but about a year and a bit ago, it was, it was a good, I've lost track of time with all that's gone on in the world, but we did a video on the Tarava Skrama 200. And in the comments of that video, somebody asked what the difference was between the 200 and the 240. So I wrote off to Verustalaker and they were kind enough to send me a 240 so we could do a bit of a comparison. So uh, obviously off the bat the 240 is, is a bigger, it, it's a bigger unit. Uh, the blade's 40mm longer and the handle is a lot longer as well so you can get right back on and you can swing it about. It's more of a chopping machine than the 200. But uh, I don't just want you to take my opinions and my word for it. Yesterday I went to see a good friend of mine, a guy called Loz Harrop who's a blacksmith and a UK knife maker. We got him to do a few tests on him and we uh, ran a few tests in his workshop there. So uh, I'll roll in the footage now. I hope you enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, remember to like, share, subscribe uh, on all the knife, knife groups and all, all that. I mean, uh, yeah, get my channel out there a little bit more. Been really, really appreciated. Anyway, without further ado, here we go. It wouldn't be Wilderness Adventures UK if I didn't go travelling with a couple of knives. Right, you've all seen this. I did a video of it a while ago. This is the Tarava Skrama by Verusta Laker. And this is the 200. Well, they were good enough to send me the bigger one. And I wanted to do a quick comparison. But while I'm here, I thought we could do a couple of tests on it, maybe. We can do, yeah, yeah. HRC test on it. On your big chopper. Yeah, on my big chopper. Yeah, test my big chopper, indeed. <laughs> now we can even try... Uh, Breaking it, I suppose. We'll give it lots. No, of no, we're not going to break no, it. Not literally break it, but no, you know, no. chop some stuff with it. Maybe we'll HRT test hack, with it. Yeah, we'll just hack into some logs and just yeah, see yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's what I mean. I, I don't mean yeah. put it in a vice and try and snap it. I mean, yeah. That's so we'll all you it. want it to do. You want it to process wood, and if it does that, that's that's good enough, mate. Exactly that. We'll test the steel. See see what it's tested. Uh, t see what it's. Uh, yeah, see what it's HRC'd. HRC'd. At, HRC'd at. What it's been tempered back to, but, and uh, then we'll have a good indication. We don't know what steel it is. We know, we're, we're rumoured to know what steel it is. 1095 but, apparently. But we don't know that. So we can so we'll, we'll HRC test it because I know how 1095 will perform at a given HRC. So that'll give me a good idea. Brilliant. Well, I'll just quickly get them out the sheaths so you can see the difference. Because somebody asked me, somebody said, what's the difference between the 200 and the 240, I think it is. Bigger blade, remember. bigger handle, aren't they? Bigger blade, bit, bigger, bigger bit handle. Broader, bit you thicker. Can swing it heft. about a little bit. Yeah. They just, it's just scaled up in every way, isn't it? Yeah. Thickness, width, and length. Hi, so, uh, slightly higher grind as well, I think. Is it on on the bigger one? I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, higher grind, so it'll be a it'll be a leaner leaner edge, and they've both got this little, like secondary. That's it's got a secondary bevel there, but it's then got a different angle, a less a, a decreased angle yeah, secondary yeah. on it. So that it's actually sharper there than it is there, it is there. Or, it, or it comes to a more acute point there. Than, yeah. Well, than their there. idea was that the, the, the front th three quarters, rough I suppose, work. is for yeah. all your rough work. And then yeah. if you want a feather stick, yeah, you've fine, got that fine steeper, work. Yeah. fine work area. Don't know if that works in reality. Well. Because that, to me, is a good enough edge to do everything oh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think it's been designed as like a one-tool yeah. option, maybe. Yeah. Um, which we all know it doesn't work. I mean, in an, in an ideal world, we'd like it to work, but it doesn't really no. work a one tool option. You need a couple of different tools at least. But it's got that nice big long handle, doesn't it? So you yeah, can, so you you can, can kind of choke one. up on the back of it and really put some force into it. So yeah. in my in my opinion, if you wanted a chopper more than a working knife, you'd go, go for the for longer that. one. Absolutely. But if you wanted just a bit of a, a big hefty knife, you'd, you'd, you'd See, probably that, go for this one. That's more than good enough to prop to prep any veg, to process any meat. Yeah. Whereas that, it's just getting a bit bulky, isn't it, for processing mm. Well, this is meat, my whole you know? theory. I mean, yeah. when they originally offered me one, this is the reason yeah. I said that the 200 will be more than enough for me. Yeah. That's like... And it's the weight in it of it. It's, yeah. a, bit, it's a bit heavy. That's yeah, like an extension it. of your manhood. It'll do it, but that'll do it better, won't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A knife, a knife for every job, really. I mean, my favourite one, I, I was just telling Loz before, you know, I've got, I've got quite a few Loz's, of Loz's knives now. And... They're stunning. If you haven't seen his work, go and have a look on his channel. They're absolutely, he's a wizard when it comes to knife making. And I just don't want to use the knives he, I've got off him because it's just a sh almost a shame. So this is my go-to, which is the tiny 80. 
and it's got a three inch blade ish three yeah. inch and i mean that, that compared to that and that that's the one i do most of my jobs with that'll yeah. do all your prep yeah. it'll do all your fine work the only thing you can't really do with that it's split your bigger logs battening and stuff you, you can't do with that anyway let's have a play with some of these i'll yeah. stop the camera we'll get over put there them on the, the tester and have a look and go and put them on the tester and yeah. have, have a bit of a chop with them so for anybody who doesn't know, this is a HRT, HRC test, test machine or tester. Uh, and what it basically does, it tells you how hard the steel is. Because obviously when you get steel, it's, it's, it's bendable. And then you heat it up, hard quench it. it, harden it. And they have to be a certain hardness to become non-brittle. So there's, there's like a fine line bef between it snapping and it bending. And you want it to be like the optimum the HRC optimum for that steel. For that steel. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're just going to test these and we're see. We're going to test it there, right on the edge of the grind, just in case this spine has been tempered back a bit. I don't, okay. I don't know if they've done that. Or I not, don't know how they make the knives. If we not. test it along the spine, we may get the wrong reading. I can't test the thing with the HRC test. You cannot test. On a slope, it's got to be on a flat. It's got to be on a flat because okay. it, it won't read right with okay. the tester because it will slide the diamond into the steel rather than got you. indenting it. So we will go there. You're the wizard. Right. I'll try and bring the camera in and show you the procedure. Right on that edge there, and what this does now, it puts a preloaded weight onto the diamond now. So it puts there's a little diamond in the end there. And it puts a preloaded weight on 50 pounds, 60 pounds. I'm not sure what it is. I used to know. So it pushes that into the steel. And what it's doing, it's measuring the resistance that it took. So once you've done that, you pull that lever forward. And it, it's now loading the weight onto the steel. And from there now, I would say that's possibly going to be about 55. Although I don't know. I'm just guessing that. Sometimes it, it, it reads a bit weird. So I say 55. It's actually 52. You were near as damn it. Which is quite soft. Okay. Quite soft, mate. It's not... 1095 performs really well here at about 58 to 59. It's, it's beautiful performing steel at that. And that is quite soft there so it's not going to hold an edge maybe they've heat treated it that way you know so not that it's hold an edge but very easy to sharpen right easier to sharpen and tougher because it's not going to chip out on you because the steel's softer it's not going to be as hard therefore it's going to be tougher there's a people a lot of people don't understand between a lot between hardness and toughness in steel Toughness in the steel means the steel will bend without breaking. That's what it actually means. Right. Or you can smash it into a log without the edge all chipping and breaking up. Yeah. That's a little bit harder, that one, mate. I'll tell you now. That one is near a 55. Maybe 56, that one. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. The longer one is harder, and maybe it's a bad batch. It's a 58. Know. Yeah. That's where that should be. That steel should be there at 58. Okay. So that's maybe cool. that's inconsistent heat treating, because I, I cannot see why they would HRC one at 52 and one at 58. I mean, I did get them over a year. Yeah, apart, yeah. So different batch, etc., etc. Let's check it there. Do two tests on it. It's softer towards the tip. So I don't, I mean, as a knife maker, handmade, handmade knife maker, you're just looking for consistency in everything. So these are factory knives. Well, yeah. there's obviously, because of the price point on them, they're not taking that extra time course, you need. Of course, you know. they're mass produced. Yeah, yeah. Something mass yeah. produced is never going to be as good as... No, it's not, mate. Not, not when you get down to the nitty gritty like this, you know. So yeah, we're at 57 on 57.5 on there. It's not too, it's only a point, half a point off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's acceptable. But yeah, we'll try that one towards the front again. Just see what that one is. Zoom you out back to here. That, that back, back end is 52. Should 
be stopping around here somewhere. Yeah, it's gone above. So it's about it's about the same about at the, the front. Same. Yeah. yeah, a little bit softer. We can test that smaller knife you've got. Shall I grab it? Yeah. I'll grab the smaller And we'll just one. see, if, you know, if it's consistent across the range then. So uh, yeah, as as fifty two again, mate. So that is fifty two across the blade. That one. So it's consistent. Yeah, it's soft, consistent. There's the little one, the eighty. Let me bring you forward just a tad, just so you can see me in the picture as well. Tighten you off there. We're doing all this in one take again, by the way, guys. So all one no, take. There's no there's no there's no cam trickery. No cam trickery, and it's honest. I mean, a lot of subscribers have said they like my my videos for my honesty. Always honest. This is turn up and do a video. This is just Show. turn up. Hey, I'm coming to see you. A 53 there, mate. I'm, I'm 53. Mystic Megging a 53 there. Okay. How long have you been making knives now? Properly 10 years on, or slightly longer than 10 years. Uh, first knives, I'm spitting at you now. First knives about 15, 14, 15 years ago. Although I used to make them as an apprentice when I was, you know, at the start of my apprenticeship, we used to make knives out of old saw blades mm -hmm. and things, you know. So if there's uh, stuff to be known, 15, we're, 12 years. What did I say? 53. 53. Yeah, we're 50, 53 and a half on that. 53 and a half. It was half a point out. If there's stuff to know about knives, this guy knows. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd let him have a look and see. That's it. your best knife, mate. It's so a big one. All we need to do now is get that on the bandsaw. <laughs> Cut that out of there and get the whizzer on that and then we'll just grind a bevel on that one. Well, well, well that one's my favourite, so yeah, we might have to do that, yeah. So this one's the best. That's the best blade. That's the one I use most. Yeah. I mean they are what they are. They'll still they'll still they'll still perform. perform. You're just you're gonna have to sharpen them a lot. Yeah, they just won't hold an edge won't for as long as, as that big one will. Yeah. And in in, in a weird way they've kinda got that wrong because that should be the softest. Because that should be the toughest one. Yeah. Because yeah, that yeah. is more specifically for whaling. Yeah. Whereas that one should be the hardest because that's going to get the most use on cutting and sawing and chopping. Yeah. And that one should be the 53, 54, that one. Yeah. So, don't know if that's a, their process. I don't know what it is, mate. You can see by how far that diamond indent's gone in there, how soft that steel is yeah. com compared to that other one. Where is it? This side. You can see the depth in that. Yeah, yeah. You can see the depth in that. You see how that hole's bigger? Yeah. That means it's pushed it's in pushed further. In further. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, it's not going to stop me using them and beating the crap out of them. But no, no they'll work. They will perform. But yeah. that one, you're going to have to sharpen it a lot. Yeah. I've already sharpened that one a couple of times. Well, I've yeah. had it a lot longer than this. This, yeah. this has not been used for anything. That's if they are 52, one, uh, sorry, if they are 1095. Well, I'll yeah. tell you what, I'll pause the recording right now and I'll go onto their website and I'll have a quick bit of research yeah. and find out exactly what they are. Right, so man. go on, we've been sidetracked. What are we doing now? Uh, well, really, it was just making sure it wasn't stainless, you know. Um, so if, if, it's, if it is a carbon steel, where it was shiny, it will blacken it up almost instantly, which it did on this, didn't it? It did, so yeah. It sent it black straight away, and this is ferric chloride, which is just like an iron oxide, a weak, a weak acid solution, um, and it will blacken your, your blade off. But, like I said to you, that will now, now as we've got a fully blackened off blade, or etch blade, even on those bevels, that will now stop corrosion on that blade. So you won't get big rust spots and nasty marks on that, you know. It doesn't actually say the specific steel, by the way. I had a read of the, read of the website. It just says carbon steel, which could be anything, quite frankly. But we did want to check it was carbon steel yeah. and not a stainless. Which is what brought us to here. Yeah. So it is It is a carbon steel. It's definitely a carbon steel. It went steel. black straight away. Stainless generally will etch. But it won't go a black like that. It'll go like a grey, smoky grey colour stainless okay. steel. Right. But it, it certainly doesn't happen that quick. So that is a carbon steel. But, you know, so it, tip it could you, be anything. If you've got a carbon steel knife that keeps rusting and you have to keep looking after it, ferric chloride, dunk it in. It will give it some mild rust protection. Obviously, if you leave it out in the rain, leave it stuck in a log overnight, it will, it will still rust. But it will give it some sort of mild rust protection. So that's what they look like. 
top one's ferric chloride, have I said that right? Yep. And the bottom one hasn't, so you can see the difference it's made to the uh, to the edge. And what we're going to do, what, what did you say this wood was? It's a piece of beech, English beech, which is almost seasoned, so it's pretty freaking hard that. And you're unlikely to encounter much that's harder than that in any British woodland. Very true. Because you're mostly your wood is going to be green that you're processing. Yeah. Possibly, if you find a, an old tree that's dead standing, that's how hard it's going to be. Yeah. Probably, or maybe a bit softer than that. So, but. are you right-handed or left-handed? I'm right, mate. Okay, so I'll <clears throat> well, stand over we'll here. Try. We'll try. We'll 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 just hack into this, but we'll try as that we know that's 58. Yeah. So we'll see what 58 versus 52 is like on this particular steel. That's interesting. I'm trying to get in a little bit closer without getting my camera taken out. Now that is pretty hard use that. That, that edge hasn't been affected. Good. There's no rolling on it. It has bluntened it where you can see the bulk of the work was done there. It's not as sharp as it is there. But conversely, there's no edge chipping. There's nothing. So that's which, that's, is, which is what you want. You that's don't want nice, the yeah. to be damaged at yeah. the end of the day. A bit of sharpening. So that one is sharper than that. I was going to say that one should be sharper because yeah. I've had that a while and I've sharpened it. in the same. Oh, gosh. You're having to work harder though, right? Yeah, I am. Because it's lighter. That's lighter, the difference. That yeah. performs really well doing that. That you've really got a whale on it. It's yeah. taking longer to do the same job, isn't it? And it's not as accurate because it's lighter. You See how accurate I was on that? Yeah, you have to put yeah, a lot more behind I'm, it to get the Because I'm putting same. more force in, you haven't got the accuracy. Yeah. It's about there anyway. So for people who wanted to know the difference and why you'd go for a 240 over a 200, as Lars quite rightfully touched on there, that's the very reason. That one's heavier, so if you're doing a lot of chopping, you're probably going to be better off with a 240. If you're going to be doing more accuracy-based work, whittling, cooking yeah staking doing spikes steaks, yeah. making yeah. temp pegs whatever the 200's probably going to be a little bit better but that on that that 52 has now lost its edge there. completely there yeah. you go whereas it's still sharp there see it picking up on my finger yeah whereas there it's, there it's nothing yeah it's, it's not i mean it's not blunt but yeah it's not that, as sharp which that's... i would have expected but it has not chipped he has not rolled and he has not even marked it, you know, so... So he just needs a touch-up on the edge. Yeah. You're having fun with that, aren't a you? A lot more accuracy with that, mate. Look at that. So because that. of the weight, you're not having to swing as hard, which means you're more accurate. I can chop that down in 16 millimetre... Uh, Increments. It, yeah, and six sixteenth of an inch little slices like that. Yeah, okay, in the same way you've got it every time. Yeah, it's a nicer thing to handle that for doing work like that, much nicer. Yeah. Right, we just brought you back just to conclude the video, guys, on what we found about the Tarava Scrubbers. <clears throat> yeah. So fire away to the expert, eh? Well, we don't know what steel it is. They're saying it's carbon steel, so, I mean, to me, there's so many different carbon steels. It could be any of them. Uh, we've HRC tested them, so to me that is the best knife at 58 HRC, which in any steel, 80 CRV2, 01, 1095, 75 CR1, 52, 100, so many. All the tool steel. They well, all perform you? around that hardness, they all perform really well, and kind of that showed it. Yeah. That, that I still got an edge, albeit not the edge it had, but it was a particularly hard task that beating through the uh, the side grain of a piece of seasoned beech, yeah. which is about the hardest test you're going to put on a knife. Um, that one didn't like doing that. It didn't. It didn't like doing you, you it. You had to put so much more force behind it to yeah. get the same To, to get the result. accuracy. Yeah. yeah, because it's like we were saying, 
once you start having to wail on something, you lose the accuracy of, you of your cut. So for that reason, that is designed perfectly for the job it, it wants to do. Yeah. That doesn't want to do that job, but it will do certain jobs better than that will. Indeed. Like if you was making little sticks, if you was doing some heavy carving, that would do it better than that will. Indeed. Because that's heavier and bulkier. Very true. Um, but the HRC was down on that one at 52. So that also showed up on the test as that losing Lonesome. its edge almost straight away, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Whereas that one has still got that edge on it. Not as much, but it's still got it. It's got more edge than that one has, put it that way. Which which bears out what the HRC tester told us it would. Yeah. Um, that one is, again, at 52, but that's a different animal altogether. That's just an everyday little user knife for doing just about anything. Yeah. But you would not want to even try and chop through a log with that. No. Do any heavy work, do any battening with it. It's just... Even your kindling you're going to make yeah. with a 200. It's just you're a, not really going to... No, that's just a really useful little Feather knife, sticks. you know, for yeah, for doing stuff around the camp. Yeah, yeah, indeed. You know, for even gutting a gutting a rabbit, cutting, you know, killing. Yeah. Portioning up a, ch a pigeon or rabbit or whatever, you know, you could do it all with that little knife. Cut bags open, cut rope, cut tent pegs. You know, even stab a worm or something, couldn't you? <laughs> stab a worm. <laughs> yeah. Feeling particularly violent. <laughs> so yeah, so. As I say, we don't know what the steel is, but it performs okay, that steel. It really does. Um, it's even performed at that lower hardness okay. So it is a decent... I can say that these have got a decent carbon steel, whatever it is. You can maybe drop them a message at some point and, and just clarify try and find what, out what it type is. of yeah, carbon yeah. it is, you know, if they yeah. can find out. Well, they'll probably watch this video. I know they watch a few of my videos. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Great price as well. I mean, they're, they're sub £100, depending on what you oh, go yeah. for. They're 60, for, 70. They're for nothing. It's, it's a lot of steel for... For that, 100 quid, that is nothing, though. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot of steel for 100 quid. Yeah. And, it, and it's under 100 quid. I yeah. mean, I mean, if you buy it with all the bells and whistles, with the, with the leather pouches, you can buy yeah. it with just a plastic pouch for like 65 quid or something. And then, then people say, well, why do I need to buy one of your knives, Loz, when I can buy that for 100 quid? And I will say to them that my knife that I make like that in 80 CRV2 will outperform that knife all day and all night. All day and all night. So and I, I, can, I can say that. Yeah. I, I can quite comfortably say that. I mean, it's whether it's worth that extra is entirely up to the person who's buying it. It, it depends you know? how often yeah. you're using it. Yeah. If you're going to have to go, down, go, go home after every camping trip and sharpen one of these knives, yeah. or yours once every few weeks or few months depending on yeah. how much you use it yeah, yeah. that's the difference you're going to be working and obviously every time you sharpen you're taking material yeah. off so the knife's getting smaller and smaller yeah. one of Loz's knives will probably last you a lifetime yeah. one of these knives you'll probably have to replace a couple of times a and, lifetime. I, and I don't know what the grain structure's like in that steel that that HRC test will only tell you how hard how that hard steel is yeah. that grain I'm not saying it is but that grain could be horrible in there it could be huge yeah. if it's not been heat treated properly Mm -hmm. In which case, that knife is not a strong knife. Then it's kind of, it's even though at fifty eight, it's still going to be brittle because the grain is so big on it. Indeed, I'm not saying that, but these are just the nuances things of heat treating. To, yeah, yeah. The things you need. Things to. you need to consider. So, you know, the only way to check out what the grain is like on that is to bend that knife, and if it breaks before it hits forty five, then it's got a big horrible grain on it. It doesn't matter to some people, but. As a knife maker, that sort of crap matters to us. So, for Rooster Lake, I send a few more and we'll bend them till they break. <laughs> yeah. I send them to Loz this time, not me, because I'm not being stood near that when that happens. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's the ultimate performance test of any blade. That. Good. Yeah. So, that was the 200 and the 240, just broken down. Take what you want out of this video. Um, I mean, he is an expert, but I'm not. Um, it is what it is. If, if, if you want a smaller knife for battening, small camp tasks, get the 200. If you want a bigger one for chopping and whaling and getting rid of brush and stuff, the bigger one will probably do a better job. That's just my opinion. They did cut and they did not chip. Which is what we set out to achieve. Which is right, all guys. we want. From him and me, hopefully do another collab with him pretty soon. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe. His details are all going to be in the description below. You smash, smash the thumb. Smash, smash, smash the thumb. Sm smash the thumb. <laughs> Sounds painful. <laughs> Do whatever you want with the thumb. I don't care. <laughs> but we'll see you again very soon. See you Look guys. Bye for now.